Gospel of John is different from the other Gospels because he does not just right to agree with the other gospel writers but he interprets he interprets who christ is and uh, he chooses what he writes the miracles he writes um, the, the, he, he chooses you know very selectively selects them uh, to have a meaning and a deep deep meaning in revealing who christ is so matthew being a, a republican and a tax collector meets Jesus, he's transformed. He later on writes the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, he's, he's writing to the Jews. Matthew is writing to the Jews. And the Jews want to know about the kingdom. The kingdom of God. So in the Gospel of, uh, of Matthew, he repeats the kingdom of God 32 times. 32 times he repeats the kingdom of God. That phrase, the kingdom of God, because the Jews really want, they really want to know about the kingdom. So he talks about the kingdom of God. The purpose of this gospel was to prove that Christ is the king. Christ is the king. Mark, and uh, those of you that are doing the synoptic gospel, you realize that Matthew borrows a lot from the gospel of Mark. Over 500 writings or verses in, the, in Mark, they appear also in Matthew. It is said that Mark, the, the Mark Gospel was the first one to be written. So the others might be borrowing are from the Gospel of Mark. Mark was writing to the Romans, who were the rulers during that time. The word end, A-N-D, is repeated 35 times. And, 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 and. He was in a hurry writing to the Romans who were soldiers, who are the rulers, who are always in a hurry. The theme of the Gospel of Mark is the suffering Christ, the suffering servant. And he's, he, 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 the purpose was to show Christ as the servant. Then the Gospel of Luke, that is written by a physician, a doctor. He calls the sicknesses, the illnesses, in their real medical terms. I don't know whether you realize that. He has the medical terms, um, you know, language, you, because he was a physician. The, his theme is the perfect man. You know, being a physician, if you're the physician, you go to a doctor and he tells you you're perfect. You, you, he gives you a bill, a clean bill of health. A look is saying Jesus is the perfect uh, man. And the purpose of writing the gospel of Luke is to show Christ the perfect man because uh, his God's sacrifice has to be perfect. God's sacrifice for man's uh, salvation. And the last one is the gospel of John. Gospel of John, as we've said, is very selective. He selects what he writes. Very, very selective. He is, John is one of the disciples of Jesus. During this time, those of you that are watching the movie Jesus, John is a young man. His brother is James. And I'll be talking about that later on before I finish. He's a young man. And at this particular time in the movie, in Ketian, he, uh, he is befriending the daughter of Peter, the disciple. And there's something that is going on there, and I like to watch that. His brother James makes fun of him, you know, during that. So anyway, John is the beloved disciple, the one who always leaned on, the, on, the, on, on Jesus. But he was very young that time. No wonder he lived the longest Almost the longest of the disciples. We'll come to that as I finish. I'll tell you a little story about how John, you know, ended. So John is writing to Christians. He's writing to Christians. And he's presenting the perfect, the perfect Savior. And the purpose was that ye might believe. John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. John chapter 20. Verse 30 and 31. That is the theme of the Gospel of John. John chapter uh, 20 and verse 31. And truly did Jesus many other signs in the presence 
of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ. And that by believing you may have eternal life. That is the life of God. Zoe. The life of God. That is the theme of the Gospel of John. And that's why we study. Now, him being very selective, and I will say something a little bit controversial here. Matthew, Matthew records 20 miracles. Matthew records 20 miracles, but he, 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 he records 21 parables. 20 miracles and 21 parables. Mark writes, records 18 miracles, but he has only nine uh, parables. Only nine parables, Mark. Luke writes 21 miracles, more than all the others. He records 21 miracles, and he records 28 parables. 28 parables. Now, the Gospel of John records only eight miracles. Eight only. Only eight. And according to my teacher who taught me in Bible college, he told me John does not have any parable. John doesn't have any parable. So he gave zero parables. John never gave a parable, never brought out one of the parables of Jesus. Now, if you turn to John chapter 10 and verse 6, you'll see something that looks like a parable. In fact, it says, and another parable Jesus gave. Now, we had a big controversy in King James, John chapter 10 and verse 6. In King James, um, this parable, yeah, in King James, it says, This parable Jesus spake unto them, but they understood not what things were uh, which he spake unto them. Now, give me in the other, in the other translation, not, not King James. Now, those who had Jesus use this illustration did understand what he meant, an illustration. Now, that's where we differed with my teacher. He was one of my best teachers, but only that one, we had a lot of argument because he said, no, 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 this is not a parable. But in King James, because I'm a reader of King James, he says, this parable. You see, when I read this parable, but my teacher tells me, no, 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 no. It is, and then he went into Greek, which I am not a Greek student. He said, this one here is paroimia, paroimia in Greek. Now, I was there wondering, what is paroimia? He says paroimia is not a parabola. Parabola is parable. In Greek, parabola is a parable. He says in the original language, it is not parabola, but a paroimia. All right, I said, okay, teacher. He's still living. He's my wonderful friend over many, many years now, over 40 years. He's in his 90s. But anyway, he says there is no parable in the Gospel of John. Now, it is saying King James. Okay? Okay? Now, today, today, I want us to see the seven I am's. A I A M. I am. The seven I am. In the beginning, in Genesis, where Moses, Moses sees a burning bush, God, God comes, speaks to Moses, and he tells him, go down to Egypt and lead my people out of bondage." And he asks him, when I go there and ask them, who sent me, what, what should I say? And God says, I am. I am whom I am. I am as send you. Those that I am means three things or even more if you're writing in the old testament i am when god said i am god is self-existence god is self-existence all right number two god is eternal god is eternal and number three god is unchangeable you cannot change him he's unchangeable he is eternal and he is, he exists. You can't change that. That's what he meant. I am as sent you. So let us look at John now, because John is interpreting the life and the life of Christ 
first of all, the book of John is a book of divinity. When you say divinity, of course there are people, and I, I was reading, found out that John was trying to counter some errors. During that time, there were two people I found. Was, was, one was called Ebion, E-B-I-O-N, Ebion, another one was called uh, Serinthas. These were teachers, and they taught error. They taught heresy. They said Christ is not divine. Christ is not divine. Christ was not God. He was just a human being. And of course, others later on, and I don't want to go into history, for those of you who have done history, the Nicene Council. Because left and right, people, some would come, and they say Jesus was Christ, was God. He was not human. And then others would come and teach Jesus was human. He was not God. Now, you all of you know, John is very clear about the divinity of Christ. That Christ was God from, the, from back there. Eternity, eternity, Christ was there. In the beginning was the word. He lacks a better word to say Christ was there before anything started. He was with God. He was God. That word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Verse 14, chapter 1. And it, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He was God, made flesh and dwelt among us. He became the divine Jesus. Now, John spends a lot of time bringing that out, that Christ is the divine one. He is the Messiah in, in the Hebrew. Greek, he is the anointed one. He is the expected son of God. Glory to God. So John, as he writes the Gospel of John, he's trying to counter the errors that were there uh, in those days to refute the errors that Christ was not the divine one. John brings out the true incarnation of the Son of God. That he was God, came down here, took upon himself the body of a human being and lived among us. Felt the way we felt. Now Paul picks it up in Hebrews and I tell you, he has feelings like us. Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, where did I go to? I'm, I'm on I am, seven I am's. You're writing seven. Number one up to seven. I'll give you very quickly. Number one. In John chapter 10 and verse 7, he says, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door of the sheep. Now, here he's talking about the way to God. You will agree with me at the end of this study that there is no any other way. No any other way. Najua wengine hapa hata wakikuja tunasema unajua makanidhani meitirero unajua imani ni kama meitirero meitirero ni hii inajenganga nyumba like the rafters that go and meet up there so do you uko na imani yako inasema hivi na wewe imani yako you have your faith like this all of them must meet in heaven no no it's either what he's saying here yeah, yes or he's not Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. Period. If the sheep want to come in and out, they have to go through Jesus Christ. John chapter 10 and verse 7, and it says, all the others that came before me were thieves. And you go to study that in your house, find out who are those who came before, who are thieves? Who are those? Number two, Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 25, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Remember the children of Israel in the, in the, in the wilderness? They ate bread. They ate manna. This was Jesus Christ. This, was a, this, this pointed to a Savior who will come and he is the one who gives life. See, the manna gave the physical life. There is one who gives the spiritual life that you can live long, you can live forever with God. Number three, I am the light. 
of the world. I am the light of the world. Chapter 9 and verse 5. And as we look at that, also John chapter 1, he says, and he, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Chapter 9 verse 5, but while I am still here in the world, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Wow. Look at chapter 8 and verse, uh, verse 5. No, chapter 8 and verse 12, sorry. Chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus said to the people, I am the light, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't be stumbled or you won't be stumbling through the darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Zoe, that leads to life. Amen. So G John is selective. He selects these verses, these sayings of Jesus Christ to show who Christ is. I am the light of the world. Number four, chapter 10 and verse 11. Chapter, chapter 10 and verse 11. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd lays his li is, is down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. Meaning there are very many bad shepherds. Whoa! And we better we who are shepherding. We better we who are shepherding. Huh? Learn to shepherd like him. He said, I am the good shepherd. Chapter 10 and verse 11. Number five. Number five. I'm talking about the seven I am's. John selects seven I am's in his book to show Jesus. Yes, he is. I am the resurrection and the life. Chapter 10 and verse 25. Chapter 11 and verse 25. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die like everyone else, they will live again. They will live again. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. This is at the, at the graveyard of, uh, of John, uh, his, his friend. John, his friend. Who, uh, who died and uh, for several days uh, Jesus didn't show up. And then later on coming there after four days comes and resurrects uh, John and John comes up. No, sorry, Lazarus, I'm sorry. Lazarus, Lazarus wakes up. His two sisters are there, Mary and, uh, and Mary and the other one. Mother, huh? Remember the arguments there? Jesus tells them, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Uh, if anyone comes to me, he will not die. Uh, anybody who comes to me, he will not die. Now, born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. Have you ever seen that? Born once, you will die twice. If you're only born physically, you've never been born again, John chapter 3. Never been born again, you will die twice. You will die physically and you will also die spiritually. You will live forever in the lake of fire. But born twice, born physically and born spiritually by accepting this Jesus we're talking about, that you can give a testimony that I am born again. I am a child of God. I am saved. I am that says that you will only die once. If Jesus doesn't come and finds you physically. So I said, born once, you will die twice. If you're born twice, you will die only once. So number five, we said, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Number six, I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm sure you must know that one is in John chapter what? 14 and verse 6. 14 and verse 6. John chapter 14 and verse 6. 
I am the truth. I am the way and the life. Jesus told his disciples. So I am the way, the truth, and we're talking about seven I am's that are well selected by John to show Jesus that Jesus is the representative of the I am. I am. And then number seven, the last one here. John chapter 15 and verse 1. John chapter 15 and verse 1. I am the true vine. I am the true vine. I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. Doesn't that, su that's, does that surprise you? When you study, do you ever imagine? And this, this ones, these ones are not found in the other Gospels. Maybe one or two or three. But John is very selective. John is very, very selective. I want to go quickly here because I want to tell you the story of John, the writer of this, before we finish uh, this service. Now, the, the ministry of Christ in the Gospel of John is divided into three. The ministry of Jesus in the Gospel of John is divided into three. Number one, the year of, of security. The year that he wasn't really that much known. Okay? And number two, the time of popularity. That went for a year and a half. Went for a year and a half. We're very popular, doing miracles here and there. And number three, opposition. When, I mean, he was so opposed. Everybody opposed. I mean, people left and right were opposing Jesus. The religious people, the political people were opposing Jesus. Today, as I close, let me tell you this story about John, John the writer of the Gospel of John. He was one of the young disciples. He was very young. So he, he lived very long. He lived, in fact, his Gospel is writing in the 90s, 90-something, John. He's writing his Gospel very, very, actually, 97 A.D. to 90, I believe to 90, what, 99 97, 98, two years when he was at the island of Patmos. You see, he, the people did not like the witness of Jesus those, those days. And so the emperor, I believe it was emperor, emperor Domitian, he banished John at the island of Patmos. The island of Patmos is way south of Italy, somewhere in the seas there. If you were a geographer, the island of Patmos is somewhere there. They banished him there where there are no people. Only snakes and rattles and all that to die there instead of killing him. They tried to put him in a, in a boiling big container that had boiling oil. And uh, historians, they differ here. They, they say he just came out alive. How he came out, nobody knows. So maybe these are just stories. I don't know. We'll know. Actually, when you get to heaven, you'll be able to sit with uh, John, and he will tell it now it is. But he's, some historian will say, they tried to boil him alive, and he came out. He came out. Later, they banished him at the island of Patmos with no human beings, no people there. Can you imagine for two years he lived there? Two years, nobody was there. My friend, what were you eating? Snakes? Raptors? I don't know, fish. I don't know what he was eating. I know we are all crying about this uh, coronavirus and the lockdowns. We don't like it. It's only two months. It's only two months. My, my. I'm not saying it should continue, but John was in the island of Patmos alone for two years. Can you imagine the loneliness? Can you imagine you would say, Jesus, you know, take me home. What am I doing here? And this is where John was privileged. On the Lord's day at the island of Patmos, that Jesus visited him with visions. With visions. And this is where John wrote the revelation. Because it was revelation. Revealed, Jesus revealed to him lots and lots and lots of things. And he wrote about the present and he wrote about the future. Not about the churches, the seven churches. 
I wanted to go to Turkey and, and visit where those seven churches were. He writes about them. Jesus tells him, right, there's the Laodicea, there's the Ephesus, there's all these churches. Uh, it's a long story. While he was there, and I don't know where he got the materials for writing. I don't know. Now, John, 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 for two years, he had a lockdown. He had a lockdown at the island of Patmos. And on the series on Sundays, we were talking about persecution, suffering, pain, temptations. This is one of the things uh, that we need to get clear. That God allows certain things in our lives for something good. John at the island of Patmos was revealed about the end times, about, about the apocalypse, what is going to happen in the end. And he writes, but he longed, he longed to get out of the island. And uh, after two years, another emperor got him out of Patmos after Domi Domitian had died, got him out, got up, got him out of, uh, out of uh, Patmos, and he went back to Ephesus where he used to be a bishop. See, this used to be a bishop in Ephesus. He was taken back there at his old age, and we are told that uh, he died at 80 years of age. And uh, one thing that I would like us to read of John, uh, John the, the, the disciple of Jesus, writing the Revelation chapter 22 and verse... Just read verse 20 because of time. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 20. Revelation verse 22 and verse 20. He which testifies these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Surely I come quickly. This man had faith. He's in the island. He hasn't left the island He's been talking, he's been writing, he's been communing with Jesus. That most of us would give up and commit suicide. I was reading yesterday of a pastor in the U.S. who committed suicide. I don't know why. Committed suicide. Maybe in such a dilemma, depression and what have you, you would rather take your life. John did not take his life. But at that island of Patmos alone, cooks for himself, writes the manuscript from papyrus or from whatever materials he... I don't know from where he got them. I don't know. See, I, see in these teachings, both in my preaching and talking about John here, and I'll be talking about the disciples, every disciple, the Lord helping me these days, I will tell you the story of every disciple. The other day, uh, did I tell you about Matthew? Now it's about John. John longs for Jesus to come. All of us long for Jesus Christ to come. And Jesus talks to John and he tells him, he that says these things to you, surely I come quickly. And how does John respond to Jesus' words that I'm coming quickly? He says, Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Even so come, Lord Jesus. John at the island of Patmos, he hears Jesus says, He that says these things saith, Surely I come quickly. And John says, Amen. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we crying that Jesus comes? Maybe after all this coronavirus, we will be ready to go. I don't know whether coronavirus is going to take another one month, two months. I don't know. But what are you going through right now? What are you going through? Are you saying, even so, Lord Jesus, come. That other things can fail. Other things at this time could be very, very difficult. But only Lord Jesus can walk with you during this time.